Welcome to GRD 130, History of Graphic Design. Just wanted to record a quick video that reviews some of your examples that you provided for the Unit 3 discussion on kind of before and after and kind of evolution of some packaging and logos of restaurants and things like that. And I just wanted to just kind of share my comments in case you don't read through the discussion forum and look at everybody's post, although you should. You don't always have to respond, but I'd like you to read through the post and also read through my responses because hopefully that's stuff that'll reinforce uh, what we're discussing. So I'll do some of that here too in case you're not really into reading that much. So the first one I'm looking at, a couple people had the tricks boxes and I don't know if you ever had tricks, but uh, the rabbit character is always trying to steal uh, the cereal from the kids or at least that's that's the deal. Uh, but if you look at these two, you can see a big difference in terms of the boldness. The red's a little a little warmer, a little bolder, a lot of movement. Here the letters are still moving. They're still playful, but now they're kind of on an angle. Instead of having type underneath it like that, they're kind of putting it to the side. The bowl itself is more dynamic. It's on an angle. There's more colorful cereal in it now, even more than I remember when I was growing up. It looked more like this, maybe not just yellow and red, but I don't know what all these things are in it now. It looks pretty uh, like a whole party going on in there. All these little raspberry looking things. We didn't have those when I was little, but it's very 3D looking. If you look at the, the tricks lettering, it has kind of a, an extruded kind of base to it with, that's purple. It has a white outline. It even has like an indented kind of area there where there's kind of an inset shadow and classic is kind of over top of there. The rabbit itself is more dynamic. Here you have creepy murder rabbit over here in some uh, red hotel room, uh, red rum, red rum rabbit over here is kind of creepy. And he's just kind of looking at the cereal. It looks like a sock puppet or something. But this guy is more fun and entertaining. There's cereal flying around. It's just a lot more entertaining for kids. It's just something that would really pull them in a little bit. A lot more colors. There's purples. There's yellows. A lot of primary colors that, that kids are attracted to. A lot of depth. The bunny now is cartoon instead of the sock puppet. He has a lot of shading to him. He's more animated and fun, and everything's just moving a lot more, a lot more diagonal lines and diagonal direction of type, and his ears are wrapping around. There's just a lot going on. There's cereal flying out, so it's just a lot more dynamic. Even the, the General Mills area, that little triangle, has been kind of de-emphasized, so it doesn't take up such a big part of the, the box over here, but, but a really nice example of, of kind of updating everything and making it more kid-friendly. The next one was a Frosted Flakes. I don't ever remember seeing this one, and this is kind of interesting. Now, the first thing I thought about when I looked at this, it's such a huge difference, the colors, everything. But if you think back of the 50s, if this is really the 50s, you know, what would have attracted kids about that? Well, I, I guess tigers are kind of ferocious animals, and this kind of makes them look very kind of sedate. They're sitting around. They're very peaceful, little kid tiger, and daddy tiger i guess and they're eating cereal and they just look very playful like like almost like little kittens in a way so they're very non-threatening tigers but everything else about it is is very you know kind of calming but now you come over here and you have tony the tiger and very bold colors primary colors you have blues you have oranges uh, orange and blue are complementary colors so there's very high contrast between them the the orange and red really comes forward even the warm colors of the cereal really comes forward compared to this. I mean, this looks like something you'd leave out for your dog. Uh, it doesn't look very appealing at all, but this one is, you know, it's got milk splashing out of it and little strawberries, and it's on an angle, and it's so big, it's, you know, getting cut off the page, and it's, and even the perspective, that's way up front, and then Tony's behind it, whereas they're just kind of sitting there like, like, like pets or something. It even has this their great tagline, which became Tony the Tiger's tagline. It almost looks like a like a Hot Wheels kind of thing. Really cool stuff. And then the lettering, Frosted Flakes, uh, not really dynamic type itself, but they put it on an angle. It has this kind of bevel embossed border around it. It has shadows inside, shadows outside. It has a white glow around it, uh, you know, like some kind of spaceship or something. It's just really, really a lot more dynamic. Even the angles, there's a curve here of the bowl, and then you have the curve here of Tony, which kind of follows that. And then his arm kind of follows up. So a lot of movement here, where here you don't have it. And then, of course, here you have this square box 
with just Kellogg's Sugar Frosted Flakes, very plain, taking up probably, you know, a quarter of the box. Whereas now this is all integrated together. It's all meant to kind of bring your eye into it and keep your eye moving around in kind of a circular manner. So a really cool kind of update. I grew up with, with Tony the Tiger. And by the way, there was even a Tony Jr. And there was something called Frosted Rice that came out. And I'll mention Frosted Rice later when we talk about Rice Krispies. Since we're talking about cereal, somebody had Captain Crunch. Now, this is a good example of it staying the same for the most part. Uh, it still has a red background. The type isn't very much different. If you look at the typeface, uh, other than the, the extruding of this, where it kind of is extruded. Extruded means it's kind of like, like pulled back, like you took a flat typeface and stretched it and made it 3D. That's kind of a extruding what's happening there. And there's even some kind of like reverberation, even in the back in the red. But the type doesn't look a whole lot different, but now it has the, the blue extrusion. It has a little inner bevel on it. It has shadows. It has all kinds of stuff going on here. Uh, but it's still the same typeface. Even the R has the little kind of curled up terminal on the leg of it. Here's the little curled up R. So it still has a lot of that. It's still jumbled a little bit, so it's kind of playful. But, but it really pops now with the blue on the red background instead of being just white on a red background. And then you still have the captain. Now he's kind of more dynamic now. He looks a little more friendly. Now his eyebrows are on his hat. The, his eyebrows can jump off his head and be in front of his hat. Whereas here, he, he had normal eyebrows. His mustache was a little pointier. Now it's kind of curled up. And he looks kind of taller. He look kind of looks like, like Napoleon here. Uh, even especially with this sword, which is a dangerous sword. You don't want to have a mascot with something like a weapon like that. Um, maybe kids will start playing with, with swords and stuff and hurt themselves. But now he just has a spoon. So now he's just kind of digging into the cereal. The cereal looks a lot better. It's a lot warmer. It's exploding out of the bowl as opposed to this. Now someone mentioned the, the cereal bowl being an outline. And I thought that was kind of unusual too until I realized the outline is actually meant to make it look like a ship. Because he's like the captain of a ship. And I guess this is supposed to look like a ship because there's a flag on it. I didn't realize that at first. But I, looking back, I don't know if that's a good idea. Hey, let's make the bowl of cereal look like a ship. You know, probably sounded clever at the time <laughs> whenever this was done. But, uh, you know, this works better. And, and notice all the depth to it. There's shadows behind the captain making him stand out more, making him look more 3D. Look at his hand. Look at all the, the shading and detail just in his hand and the spoon and in his is uniform and all, all that it makes it look very metallic and all that he still has the c on there but but everything looks a lot more detailed and smooth kind of what kids are used to from cartoons and from movies and things like that so lots of depth to it lots of color even the, the typefaces stays crunchy in milk which is really the same typeface as this one except in a in a lighter style now they used kind of this decorative kind of crunch a ties me captain thing over here and put it on an arc and stuff like that so a lot of neat stuff going on here so this is a nice example too of, of an update but one where they keep it the same and in fact they decided let's get rid of the quaker guy on here which is on a lot of cereals like life and stuff but you don't want him on a kid cereal you already have an old guy here <laughs> you don't need two old guys on, on cereal another logo of an old guy i don't know if that'll do anything for the kid so this was a nice example too Okay, finishing off the cereals, this was the last cereal one that, that I'm going to show. And a couple people had this one as well as the Trix one. And this is a little blurrier. I guess the older one is a little blurrier here. But big difference here, especially the colors, you know, the primary colors of the blue certainly grabs kids a little bit more. But there's so many things going on. I mean, you have drab beige and green colors. It looks like something that, the you know, they'd send overseas for the GIs in World War II. Uh, not really anything really appealing to kids. And actually, it wasn't really a kid's cereal. It's actually crispy rice, and it doesn't have sugar. These did not have sugar. You had to, like, sprinkle sugar on it. And I mentioned that there was something called frosted rice where Tony Jr. actually promoted frosted rice. It was Tony's child, his son, and he pushed these uh, frosted rice cereal. I remember having that, but I don't think I've seen that around anymore. But now you could just sprinkle your own sugar on it. And they might even have Rice Krispies with sugar on it. But they didn't have sugar on it. But the big thing about Rice Krispies, uh, I guess it was supposed to be healthy because it's rice. But they introduced these characters, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. And you know why they had those names? Because the cereal, when you poured milk in it, made a sound. And it made this kind of crackling sound because of the little hollow 
parts of the of the bubbled up rice and stuff. So it, it would make like a crackling sound when you'd pour milk into it. And even on commercials, you'd see kids with their ear to the bowl. And I, I think I remember doing that when we were little. You used to kind of put your ear to the bowl and listen to the crackling of the cereal. It's like a fun activity. Other than just eating cereal, you could you could hear it as well. So they they kind of capitalized on that the noise that the cereal makes and made it into a fun thing. And it's actually kind of a somewhat of a healthy cereal, not like rice, puffing rice makes it that healthy, but at least there's not a lot of sugar in it. And a couple other things here, just to point out about this layout, obviously this layout is just all text and very plain, but this layout has, you know, the Belville and Emboss look. It has kind of a, a backdrop to the Rice Krispies. It has kind of blue behind it. It has shadows to make it look 3D. There's a little glow behind it to make this stand out a little bit more. And again, the blue makes the warm cereal pop. Again, you're, you're going to see a lot of warm, cool combinations. Cool background makes the warm cereal and also makes those little red elements pop. And they're repeating red elements. Here's the red in the Kellogg's. He's got red hair, a red bandana. He's got red there. He's got a red shirt on. And then we got strawberries in there. So sometimes strawberries are thrown in just to add some accent to the cereal, just to make it look nice, really. I don't know how many times you cut up strawberries and put them in cereal, especially in Rice Krispies, probably not, but it looks nice on a box. It adds a nice little flash of color. And obviously the characters are really uh, appealing to kids. I guess they're kind of like little elves. They almost remind me of the Smurfs, and I wondered if they inspired the Smurfs. I did not research that yet, but I'll have to check out if they inspired the Smurfs. But also another thing I just want to mention about layout, since in graphic design we're talking about layout. You know, now we have product placement. We didn't have any over here. We have a picture of the cereal. And the layout kind of has this guy up here where he's kind of like looking at you, leading you in. And then your eye kind of moves down here in like a, almost like a, a V pattern. It kind of pulls you in here. Then you move down, you follow these guys down. And then him pouring the milk kind of leads your eye over here. So you kind of have this angle going in that keeps your eye kind of moving around. And I, I wanted to mention that about the Tony the Tiger too, because Tony the Tiger is looking at you. Uh, kind of engaging you, and that's what this guy's doing too. He's looking at you, engaging you, and kind of bringing you in a little bit there. So it's it's a nice layout, even in terms of repetition. The arc of this kind of repeats the arc of that a little bit. So a lot of movement here, lots of layout to keep your eye interested. Sometimes kids used to just sit. Now they look at phones, but in my day, you just sit and look at the cereal box. You'd flip it over and see if there was any stuff inside. But, you know, it's definitely more engaging. And sometimes that's all you looked at when you were a little kid, kind of kind of eating cereal. You just look at the box and you'd pour in more. When, when you eat them all up and there's still big milk left, you'd just throw in more. But anyway, that's a nice, uh, another nice upgrade of the cereal. I never saw that one before, but it's certainly a big difference. And the last thing I want to mention here, and there's a lot of restaurants we could look at. Someone had Olive Garden. And the trend with restaurants that you'll see, and it's nice that this one has the evolution, is especially even if you if you zoom back, I'll zoom back a little bit, uh, the easiest one to read is this one. And you might think, why is that? Well, because now logos aren't just going on signs and sides of buildings. They're going on apps. They're going on your phones. You tend to look at logos very small now. So they have to look good small. They have to be clear, easy to read. And this is very clear, easy to read. Any detail on it makes it harder to read. Even this thing, this was kind of more recent, but I never liked that repeated uh, apple kind of shape. I, I never really thought that did anything, kind of that overlap shape. I mean, it looked clean, but I never liked the apple. I never liked all the detail in it. I actually like this apple better, but I didn't like that type. It's almost like a, like a black letter kind of type, like a kind of like an Irish Gothic kind of type that we have there. Very hard to read at small sizes. I mean, obviously they had that originally and I get that could be Irish, Appleby. I don't know if that's an Irish name or not, but you can see it's it's hard to read from far away. It looks like Hopplebees, but this is real easy to read. The apple's nice and clean. And also with, with logos now, not only are they easy to read on phones and things like that, but you could put them on different backgrounds. There's not a lot of, like, what do you do with that color if it has to be one color? Uh, you know, just one gray or something. I don't know. This is easy. You could just make everything all white, just like the Apple logo. If you think of the, you know, Apple computer, you know, they could make it white. They could be transparent. It could be anything. So you have a lot of possibilities here. You could make the type a different color. You could make the Apple white or something, depending on what background it goes on. It's very flexible. This is not flexible. It's a nice logo, but it looks like a sign. But what happens if you take it off a sign and you put it on something else? That's why then you're putting it in a box and you're putting a box inside a box. That's why when 
we have graphic design classes and we're designing logos, I try to caution students against putting things in a box because you know, a business card or a brochure, anything already has a box. Then you're putting it in a box again and it just makes it harder to design with. So keeping it open and loose and free just keeps it a little more flexible, a little more easy to read at small sizes. So this is what you'll see with things like Olive Garden and other logos like that. Even the Burger King, they went back to the old uh, retro look and I, and I guess it's because it's simpler. It's actually a simpler kind of look. So you'll see a lot of restaurants going simple, simple, simple. I just just about anyone you can look at is going to get more simple because it's meant to look cleaner and easier to read at smaller sizes. So I think that's it for now. I think that covered everything. Like I said, the Olive Garden one, if you check that out, the one that someone had wasn't really high quality, so I didn't want to bring that up. But again, they made that one. They, they kept it still scripty, but they also implementing the script style, but it's just cleaner. It's easy to read at smaller sizes. They, they use an olive kind of branch kind of thing instead of grapes. And it just looks, it, it just looks cleaner and more modern, yet it still looks traditional. It doesn't look like they tried to modernize it too much. So that's a nice example too. If I put that on the screen there, you'll see that. So, so I just want to bring that up and just discuss some of those that we were discussing in the discussion board. Uh, I like having us look at these things. I know we don't always want to talk about cave drawings and, and you know stuff like that so it's fun to look at things that have changed kind of around in our lifetime or my lifetime so i'll talk to you later